Today's presentation is Stepping On Up with the new CHUM Executive Director, John Cole. CHUM is a leading, bold, ambitious, multi-sectoral plan to address unsheltered homelessness in Duluth over the next five years. Be a part of today's forum for details about the progress of this plan and learn about your role in helping make it happen. And a little bit about our esteemed speaker this morning, John Cole was formerly the interim director at Align Minneapolis, also a faith-based homelessness organization and began last year on June 1st to replace the former CHUM executive director, Lee Stewart. Cole, born in the Caribbean, came to Minnesota in 2011 after founding Friends Hotline of Antigua and Barbuda, a non-governmental organization supporting youth in crisis. At the same time, he was youth director for the Diocese of Northeastern Caribbean and Aruba of the Anglican Church. John is also having served as the director of the Dignity Center, an interfaith ministry of Hennepin Avenue, United Methodist Church of Minneapolis that helps people live in poverty. And at this point, we are so grateful for your time, John. The floor is yours and you're in for a real wonderful presentation, everyone. Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's good to be here with you. Um, I have heard great things uh, about you and I look forward to being having this conversation with you I want to talk about stepping on up, which came about um, one of the things when I first came to Duluth was being introduced to so many people. I had over 100 meetings um, um, probably within my first month. Um, but as, as I went around, uh, I was asking about the plans to address homelessness. And, you know, what those guys, those people say, that's a good question. Um, not sure if we have any currently right now. And, and so um, I got together with the other service providers, homeless service providers, and uh, we came up with this stepping on up um, five year plan to address homelessness. And I just want to share um, some things about it uh, with you today. So that's okay. I can then have to advance this. Okay, good. So uh, unifying interests. Uh, what we're experiencing back then and currently is all of this, uh, a lot of complaints um, from the community, from the business sector, um, also um, our providers, they all are operating beyond capacity. Uh, and the folks in my shelter, um, they spend up to two years um, from the time they get onto a coordinated entry list um, they spent up to two years waiting for a housing opportunity. And um, as we track those persons who pass away each year um, who are experiencing homelessness, we, we, we really recognize that in addition to having a shorter lifespan, persons experiencing homelessness are, are, are dying at faster rate than regular con, um, con, uh, population. So um, the problem is that um, in the county um, in 2020, we had the shelter count, which, which, which unsheltered count was said that we had 284 persons there. But what we experienced back then in the winter of 2020 was over 588 persons had checked into a warming center um, during the winter, um, signaling the fact that we have far greater number of persons um, who are experiencing unsheltered homelessness. And when we talk about shelter in Duluth, our capacity is really 155 beds. Um, and of that 155, 47 are uh, reserved for domestic violence situations. Uh, so you can see then we're really, really um, short in terms of capacity to respond to persons experiencing homelessness. Um, we're over full, we're flowing, we're doing the best that we can, but it, it is not enough. And so what are the principles, principles guiding this plan <laughs> is basically that we can't keep criminalizing homelessness or moving people from place to place. The city has a, a ordinance against camping. Uh, and, and so <clears throat> it leaves no clear alternative for persons who are experiencing homelessness um, who are not in shelter. And so um, the practice of, you know, coming in and running them off, um, it's just like playing guacamole. We were just uh, sending them um, further along, and we ex we're wasting city resources in that way. Uh, we're concerned about public health and safety. Uh, these must be maintained, um, not only for, for those of us who are sheltered, but for those who are unsheltered as well, those who are unhoused. Um, so we want everyone to have housing that is permanent and appropriate to their need. We want it to be culturally specific. 
uh, in the community that supports them. We want to make sure that the BIPOC community is involved in addressing unsheltered homelessness and that we have a collaborative systematic approach uh, by everyone in the sector, in, in, in the community, local government, nonprofit, um, for profits, everyone has to be involved in addressing uh, this homeless situation, which is chronic. Um, getting people off the street is, is a priority. And we need a clear unified message um, that the police will enforce the no camping ordinance, but that we are creating authorized safe outdoor living zones, sorry, for, for those who are um, unsheltered. So the <clears throat> facets of the plan were in phase one, which is um, this year, we wanted to be able to create these authorized outdoor living zones um, that comes with street outreach workers. And the goals uh, of this plan were to address, respond to the needs of communities um, and parks um, uh, for safety and, and sanitation, allow us to be able to, to find folks where they are. If they're staying in these authorized living zones and in connection with street outreach workers, then it allows for in reach and continuous access to services. Uh, folks will be able to access basic shelter from the elements for the summer and fall months. And we want to reduce harm caused by substance abuse because they'll be in contact with those service providers during harm reduction. And we think it will decrease violence and the calls for emergency services um, and, and, and so reduce costs to, to the, the city generally. So the plan is to develop our probably of four capacity control scattered sites, you know. Uh, we don't want any more than 10 persons in each of these sites because it's, it's best practice of shown. You keep it small, it's easier to control, and you can get a tighter, a tighter community being built. Uh, we would have all of these amenities there, uh, garbage disposal shops, disposals, basic hygiene facilities, um, allow for self-government, harm reduction approach. Uh, we'll um, <clears throat> enroll medical, mental health, substance abuse, and housing providers to do in reach on the site. And we will try to ensure that uh, we get funding for two additional street outreach staff uh, to engage and assist the unsheltered and access services. I think right now, uh, Deb Holman has been doing that um, consistently, if I think from 2003 or 2005. Uh, then she was joined by uh, one person from HDC in pretty recent times. And then the Greater Downtown Council um, recently employed someone. So we, we but uh, that person is focused on um, that particular geographical area, whereas Deb and I think John is his name, is spread throughout the 26 miles of the loop. So three persons, <laughs> really not enough, you know. And so we want to be able to increase that. So this plan calls for two persons uh, to be a part um, of the response and, and the connections to persons who are unsheltered. And so the authorized living zones will feature well-being checks. And uh, as I said before, restriction in numbers of tents. Uh, it could be cars because we do have persons who live in vehicles around. Um, and so, but the non-sanctioned sites will, the ordinance will still continue to be enforced, but you know, um, we'll be able to direct those folks now to an option because right now there is no option available for them when the authorities show up. And so that cost is around $300,000. The other response, this, this second phase, um, we call it shelter next response. And that um, is modeled on the indoor villages concept um, that is currently in existence in, 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 in Minneapolis. We want to provide privacy and safety for persons. We want to uh, continue the in-reach and service provision. They'll have shelter and protection from heat and cold. Um, and this would be a next level shelter, um, a step up from what currently exists. It will create space for couples and other persons who will not use traditional congregate shelter. There are folks who will not darken the doors of our shelters for a variety of reasons are legitimate. And, and so we have to respect that um, we need a variety of options uh, in response to this. So this is what the indoor villages looks like. Um, in, in, in North Minneapolis right now. Um, it's a large warehouse building. I think it's former Kmart, which has repurposed and, and they've built all of this in, inside of it. 
So do they have a hundred um, individual units? And, and so each person has access to their particular space. The eating area is common. They, they, I think they cater the food and so persons just have to eat and there's a um, communal showers and baths and, and restroom facilities. Um, really modern and high tech. This is what inside a room looks like. Uh, and so we can imagine this being available for our folks here in, in, in Duluth. Uh, one thing we know that um, it is probably um, not recommended and impractical to think that we could have a facility of this size in Duluth. So what we're really proposing is to have four of these smaller with probably 25 persons um, per unit in different areas um, in, in the community. And so the cost of this um, the, was $8 million, which includes two years of operations um, for all the staff involved. Lots of um, rooms provided for staff. This is a staff area. Um, and these would be where the social service providers and uh, resource workers um, will be. And we'll be able to provide the services necessary for, for, for those persons that who are, will be taken directly off the street and put in a structure like this. So this is what shelter next looks like. The other option we had, we were thinking about, um, was kind of modeled after what Madison did in Wisconsin with using tiny homes. Um, so um, this is what phase two, the shelter next response looked like. And we're giving ourselves between um, this year and 2023 to try to get this off the ground. Um, so, and we say bold and ambitious that we really mean it, right? Um, so we wanna make sure that folks understand that it is not a permanent solution to homelessness. You know, as they say, um, housing is what will end homelessness shelter that saves lives and that's what we're doing um, to be able to provide amenities to save the lives of persons so that they can focus on overcoming the challenges and obstacles uh, while we work towards um, the permanent housing solution the third phase is the transforming response phase three which is a movement towards long-term housing and what this would do will move people out of shelter um, they would have had opportunity to be stabilized um, in, in phase two. Um, and then will it be moving into supportive housing? Could be permanent or it could be a continuous step up depending on that individual circumstance. Um, but this one will come with opportunities um, for vocational uh, development, skill development, um, life skills um, so that they're prepared, we're preparing folks to be able to, to manage their own home. Uh, this is one of the things when you live in crisis mode, you, you really um, lose that skill. And so this is uh, one of the things that that phase would do. It will be 200 um, probably tiny homes, um, of course, probably in scattered locations as well. Um, and it will be creative, cost effective, and um, it will be based on um, um, tried and true practices that have been developed in other cities. So this phase, when we conceived of it, we were thinking that, you know, there are three possible models. Um, the first one, um, new model of housing supports, which um, was being developed uh, by the, the Salvation Army and, and one, one Roof. Um, so they had been working on this over the years and it was kind of like a 12 unit dormitory style apartment with, with, with which have kitchenette, toilet, shower and sink and, and the sink. And the, the projected cost was $3 million for 24 units. Uh, so that was one option we were proposing. The other one, uh, this is the being developed in, in Minneapolis as well, um, is the Envision community. This is a partnership between HCMC, the health sector, who has realized that it is better and uh, more cost effective to be able to have folks who they treat being housed than to have them uh, release them back into homelessness and having them coming back into emergency room. Emergency room costs are, are really, really, really um, expensive. So it's, it's cheaper to be able to partner. And so they partnered with persons who are experiencing housing. And, and from the very beginning, beginning, they were part of that project to conceptualize design and, and to work with, with getting 
um, this off the ground. I think where they are now, the land has been allocated. They have received the grant from this, the state and they're working towards getting this. There's a model home all developed and we um, were able to look at that. This is 24 micro home, tiny micro homes around one common house, uh, two and a half million dollars um, housing 24 persons. Uh, the third option we thought, and this one is the most cost effective um, and based on our experience, Chum's experience is that we were able to, to purchase a motel um, and to be able to convert that into permanent supportive housing. 44 apartments at a cost of 2.65. So of the three options, this is the best, but the thing is how many hotel owners or property owners are available are, are willing now to sell. Um, and so that may be the drawback. If you can't identify that, then we'll have to go with one of the other models. Uh, so in a nutshell, this is what the five-year plan looks like. The total cost is $33.3 million. Um, phase one between 2021 and 2022. Um, phase two uh, beginning to operationalize this year to, so that we could really um, see that materializing in 23. And then phase three, uh, probably in 2026. Um, and so what we will be seeing is, is, is unsheltered homelessness managed. We'd have a 65% increased shelter capacity with the introduction of the 100 shelter next units. And then the 200 low cost housing units uh, would be responding to specific needs of each residing population. We'd have a strengthened homelessness response system because if you have all these different sites of persons needing assistance, then the providers then would have to develop mobile capacity to be able to de deliver services in each of these locations. Uh, and so our response system then would become nimble, uh, we would have capacity and we'll be able to provide shelter to all Duluthians without housing. So progress, where we are since we, we rolled this out, um, we conducted uh, in December a research tour. It took 32 of Duluth's um, um, leaders from government, city, and, and, and county, um, private sector, Chamber of Commerce, the health, the hospital systems. We took them on a tour of Minneapolis and St. Paul's, and we looked at various areas, um, various models. And so they came back fully enthused and committed um, to, to, to the plan and, and, be, and wanting to be part of this development and, and realization. Um, so we had persons of lived with lived experience of homelessness and being part of it, and they are committed to working alongside um, for the solution which would benefit them. Um, we had a downtown council is also part of this. We have promised support from the Chamber of Commerce. We're in dialogue with them as we speak right now about how that could materialize. Um, we are having ongoing conversations in preparations for phase one right now. The warming center that didn't that. Um, Chum currently operates, uh, will close April 1st. That's our timeline. And so we kind of figure, uh, how can we begin to think of having something in place so that folks will have somewhere to move to? Um, we have secured, secured funding for an organizer. And so we'll be um, looking to, to fill that vacancy um, in, in a short space of time. So uh, we need your help. Um, and so if, for more information, you can go to steppingonupdeluth.org, um, and there you can just subscribe. Uh, once we have your contact information, then we'll be reaching out. Uh, we want folks to be able to help us in terms of advocacy. When we, we know, when we begin to, to say to the city, we need some of the ARP funds, which will be matched by the county. And then we can also um, have policies that will support these things. Um, education is an important component, especially when we're going to be having to, to talk to persons and neighborhoods and communities where these sites are going to be located, financing to, to figure out how to, um, to get this thing developed as well as to support its operations and the planning, design and development sites of it. Uh, so these are all the areas that once you subscribe will be um, then getting back to you to say, what are you interested in and how can you help us in doing that? And so the entities involved in this would be our ECHO, CHUM, human, the HDC, Human Development Center, Lifehouse, Loaves and Fishes, Lutheran Social Services, 
safe haven and Salvation Army and this and the whole plan is in, endorsed by the Affordable Housing Coalition. I think I will stop here to allow for some questions as we go along.